What's up? My name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be speaking pretty candidly about my university experience, specifically focusing on all of the classes that I took. I would probably say 10 different subjects, but technically it's nine. So I didn't just stick to like, you know, what is my degree and then take classes all in that subject area. I took nine different subjects from all around the, you know, academic offerings that my university provided. I don't think I've ever publicly said where I went to university, but now that my time there is drawing to a close, I went to uh, Western University or the University of Western Ontario in Ontario, where I am from. I had a great time there. I would say I've had a very difficult time of it, a very difficult battle getting my degree. Starting after my second year there, if you've been on my channel for any length of time, you also know that I went through a very serious concussion. I won't touch on that too much in this video because that's not what it's about, but um, yes, overall I had a really good time at Western. I loved it. I've always been in love with learning, but going to university just like that's where I really just like you know, blew up, thrived. When I applied for university from high school, I applied to Western both for their neuroscience program and also for their English language and literature program. And then I also applied to the University of Guelph for their biology program. Because leaving high school, I thought that biology was the road that I wanted to go down. However, I didn't accept my offer for biology at Guelph, even though I did get accepted because I didn't want to leave my hometown. I was a little scared hometown girl who didn't want to leave. And so I accepted my offer, not for neuroscience, but for English language and lit at Western because that was kind of like my second choice. And I thought that I was going to essentially take a bunch of science credits at Western and then transfer them to Guelph. Once I grew a little bit out of my shell and felt comfortable moving away from home. Obviously that never happened because guess what? I freaking hated biology, but which was so valuable because imagine if I had gone to Guelph and just done the whole biology route, I would have suffered. Western, along with I think most Canadian universities, they offer such a diverse first year. I think you really only need to take one credit in your area of study um, before moving on to second year. And it also is mandatory to complete diversity requirements. So you have to take courses from like arts and humanities, sciences, social sciences. So I had to fulfill those requirements off the bat, but in my first year I took no duplicate. I took no duplicate subjects, so I had five different subjects in my first year. I also took so many different subjects at university because I wanted to, but also because I didn't know what the heck I wanted to do. I really, really didn't. Um, I was already conflicted on biology, English, which had always been a huge part of my life and the love of my life. I was going into my first year at university being like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I think a lot of the time that can be really scary. Taking such a wide range of subject matters like really let you kind of discover what you wanted to do. So it was very valuable in that way as well. And I just freaking love learning. So without further ado, I'm gonna go down every single subject that I took, tell you a little bit about my experience. This is in some way helpful um, if you're taking any of these subjects or if you're thinking about, you know, applying for university or just any of the above. I was gonna rank them worst to best in terms of my personal experience, but I think we're just gonna go probably in order instead. Let's start with biology because we already talked about it. So in my first year, I took introduction to biology. <laughs> to put it frankly, this was a shit show for me. But what the heck does this mean? What does this course actually look at? It provides an understanding of fundamental biological concepts with emphasis on function in and relevance to humans. Topics include inheritance, evolution, ecology, behavior, and ecosystem health. Um, I suffered. Let's talk about it. I'm someone who, if I'm not interested in a subject matter, I will tank. If I'm not interested in what I'm studying, I'm someone who finds it extremely hard to do well because I'm the kind of person who like, if I don't care about something, I will not put any effort into it unless I absolutely have to. Like I'll put enough effort in to pass. If I'm really not passionate about something, it's very hard for me to do well. So I did I did poorly in biology, okay? I did really, really poorly. Um, it was a huge sore spot on my self-confidence. Also a very overwhelming course in a number of ways. Western is a pretty big university. We have around 40,000 students, I think, although it never felt like crowded or anything until I went to my first biology lecture and there were 700 people in the lecture hall. Uh, I had a very bizarre, <laughs> I had a very bizarre first year experience because I would go from like a 700 student lecture to an 11 person English tutorial. So I'd be going from like being in a room with 700 people to 10 other people. That was very bizarre. It was also overwhelming because this biology course was probably the most expensive course that I've taken. I don't mean in terms of tuition because, you know, all classes kind of cost the same, but in terms of textbooks, 
I don't know why biology textbooks were probably the most expensive. Um, they weren't even hardback. They weren't, they were like this big or not cheap. And then on top of that, you had to buy access to like an online lab simulation to prepare you for your lab. And then because biology has lectures, tutorials, and labs, you then had to buy a lab coat and like lab goggles or glasses, all of which was a lot of money. I did really well in biology historically in high school, but when I reached it at the university level and they started to bring in math, um, I'm very bad very bad at math so bad at math it has always been the bane of my existence i struggled a lot i also struggled because i'm really not a hands-on person i do very poorly in hands-on tasks and obviously labs are all hands-on every lab i dreaded going to you get placed in groups of four so you did have other people to help you i just really don't excel in lab work and on top of that i found it tedious tremendously boring and very repetitive uh, I would say overall biology was a valuable experience for me because it taught me what I didn't want to do and uh, more importantly what I didn't want to do was what I thought I wanted to do so save myself there but yeah on top of that I did really poorly in this class and so did a lot of people because the professor was very very bad and this is probably something you're going to hear me say a lot in this video so I'll just say it now hopefully once I think a lot of professors are so talented so smart so good at researching writing, publishing, you know, just doing a lot of individual research, but that doesn't mean that they are necessarily good teachers. And that was definitely the case for a couple of these people that I'm going to mention, not by name, but um, the memes. The memes that were being created in the 700 person group chat on Facebook Messenger, they were out of control. After every lecture, you would have people swarming to the group chat to try and make sense of what uh, the professor had been trying to tell us all class. She would also go very, very slowly. Half of her sentences were just saying, okay, and then mixing up the material. And then because she ran out of time, she would go through 20 slides in five minutes at the end of class. That was a pattern that happened every single week. This was, I think this was a screenshot I took after the midterm or something. Bruh, why did these questions gotta be so tricky? Bio was brutal, rip. If this test doesn't get bell curved, the questions were riddles. I didn't even know what he was asking. Overall, not a great experience. I <laughs> would probably rate biology as the um, as my least favorite course that I've taken, or subject area, I should say, that I've taken. Next up, I took a class in anthropology. Specifically, the class that I took was called bioarchaeology, which sounded so cool to me. This class focused a lot on archaeological remains of humans and non-humans, mostly just primates in this case. And this gets the award, this class gets the award for the most depressing class I've ever taken. It was a three hour lecture once a week. Um, it was the only three hour lecture class I've ever taken and I will not make the mistake of taking another one because I just, you don't have the capacity anymore to like focus or be really present after three hours of listening to someone speak and like trying to stay on top of everything. It's exhausting. It would leave me so burnt out at the end of the day, just sitting somewhere for three hours with really minimal breaks. There should have been more breaks in this class because it was really torture. It was also in like the really musty, dusty basement of the, um, what was it? Earth Sciences? I think it was the Earth Sciences building. Um, there were like six other people and it was the most, like no one, everyone in that classroom just looked like they wanted to fall asleep, jump out the window or, you know, call it quits and walk out. This whole class basically was just primate bones and evolution, which was really cool. I did appreciate some of the things, but once again, the professor was not a great lecturer. He just read off of his slides, like word for word, and he would also go on so many tangents of like his own experience. Very cool, but there was such an insurmountable amount of material to be covered that um, we didn't really have time for that. What did this one teach me? Anthropology taught me how not to write research papers. Um, because I was an English Lit student, you don't really write research papers in the way that the science faculty writes research papers so the first ever research paper i wrote at university i like he passed me he more than passed me but it was so bad and i really learned like what not to do in this class you're supposed to take like a significant event in this case it could be an archaeological find or a dig some anthropological phenomenon of importance and then do a whole bunch of research on it, present other people's research as well as your own interpretations and add a little bit to it based on the research that you had done. I didn't fully understand that at the time, like I really didn't. Well, writing essays in English just like came naturally to me. Um, 
there wasn't really ever a point where someone sat down and taught me how to write a research paper. Do you want to know what I wrote on? I wrote on veganism and like veganism in some primate species. Could that be? Could that be a valid research paper? It could be, but not in the way that I did it. My paper just turned into like an examination of factory farming with a small tangent into primate diets. We'll circle back because um, I, I did get really good at writing research papers, so don't worry. But little first year Emma, she really messed it up. So for most of these different subjects, you'll see I only took like one class in each subject, but for the next one, which is languages, I took one, two, three. I took three and then technically two months of two other ones because that was the year of the concussion where I lost everything and had to drop all of my classes. Anyway, languages. We're gonna start with Italian because I took Italian in my first and second years of university. Yes, ho preso due anni di italiano all'università, ma fa molto, molto tempo che ho utilizzato la lingua, quindi sono un po' arrugginita, arrugginata, arrugginata, rusty? I'm a little rusty. Um, I loved, loved Italian. Flourished. I have, oh god, okay. Buckle up, I'm about to tell you why you should take language courses at university. Um, first of all, the amount, the varied amount of learning approaches that a language course takes is so, so fascinating. So for Italian, we all sit in this lecture hall that was like a little mini circle and it was an extremely uh, participation heavy course. It started out so nerve-wracking because the whole class, the professor, they were, all my Italian professors were from Italy and they were just so nice and so excited, so passionate. They really wanted to teach us more than just the language and teach us a bunch of culture, different things. I'll talk about that in a second, but you would just get cold called every single day to answer a question. Um, language courses are really no joke. So honestly, most people did really struggle, to similarly how I struggled in biology, even when I was seeing people who, you know, biology was their forte, really excel, whereas language was my forte and I was really excelling. But the varied language approach is because you did have a textbook um, that was used, but a little bit rarely. It was mostly for self-study. But like I said, most of it was like this very real learning environment, which I think a lot of other subjects don't have the opportunity to present to students. It was fantastic at bringing you out of your comfort zone. Like I said, very, just like the most authentic learning experience because you really had to think on your toes. You had to be alert all of the time. You really had to make sure you were putting effort in unless you wanted to fall behind, not know the answers in front of people, which was probably uh, a lot of motivation. But also you got to listen to like conversations that the professor would have with other students. Uh, the professor would break away, come over to talk to you one-on-one -on -one to have a conversation while you were supposed to talk to other people. It was a great class for making friends because you actually had to talk to them and specifically talk to them in Italian depending on where you were. The whole 50 minute lecture was just this absolutely varied changing learning approach that I think really complemented everyone because it gave you such a wide variety of ways uh, to learn Italian, to learn a language. A lot of the time he would invite like a whole group of people up to the front of the class to write on the board and then we would discuss with each other and after a while the like fear of messing up just kind of went away because we're, we were all in the same boat. There's also like this interactive course that you got on like a CD <laughs> that you would install on your computer or download. You would watch these little clips and then you would answer like quizzes about that. So much culture was tied in. Also geography of Italy. The final project for the course was in groups and you would present in one of the big atriums in a different university building in front of people um, your project and you would have to like present to your professor in Italian but then offer like people who are passing by knowledge about Italy in some way so my group got food um, and we did we did, I think, mostly Italian drinks and we like made them at home, brought them in. Ours was a big hit because everyone just wanted free drinks um, and it was just really, like a really good experience. I cannot emphasize enough. And also the amount of learning experiences outside of the course that were available because there was an Italian club. There were million opportunities to go and study abroad in Italy for like the summer term and it was just so good. So good, and it really makes your brain work in so many different ways, and I like just really only have appreciation, love. Also, the Italian professors do take the prize for being the fastest markers, 
we would have our test back one or two hours later. Anything that was submitted one or two hours later, she would have it back to us. One of the professors would have it back to us. It was insane. I'll speak really briefly about French because I did take one French course in like the summer term. This was online and it was still okay. I will say it didn't compare to the delivery of the Italian course at all. This one also took a different approach because it wasn't an introduction to French since I already spoke French. Uh, I went to French immersion elementary and high school so you just take a placement test and then you get admitted to the upper year French courses so it did take a very different approach but you also had to like do a lot of speaking, do a lot of writing, do a lot of reading and just all around you know all the elements of learning a language so highly recommend highly highly recommend language courses no matter what you're doing I think they are super valuable um, to any area of study and just so fun and so rewarding and so good okay Moving on. Something else I took in my first year that um, I can highly, 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 highly recommend and that I love so much was classical studies. Um, I think a lot of the times I didn't really know what this was until I went to university because my high school didn't have anything like this. A lot of the time classical studies get gets mistaken for like studying classic literature, but classical studies is the study of ancient Greece, ancient Rome, and um, ancient Egypt in this case as well because my university offered that. So freaking love. I fell in love with this. I took a first year just like basic classic civilization introduction to Greece and Rome. So it was a full year course split between ancient Greece and then ancient Rome. Um, I fell in love and then I decided I wanted to do a minor in classical studies alongside my English major. Really loved it. So these are the courses that I took in classics. Uh, I did take the intro to classic civilization, Roman emperors, Egyptian art and architecture, late antiquity, and Greek and Roman painting. You mostly do eventually decide to specialize in either Greece, Rome, or Egypt. Um, ah, uh, I think for me it would have been Greece. I think I would have picked Greece, although really obsessed with Egypt, but they only offered like one or two courses. So Egyptology, I think, is more of a master's program thing that you do, um, at least in my experience, but Greece, ancient Greece really stole my heart. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't complete my minor because in my third year, which I guess we'll just get to because I was also taking Greek art and architecture, Athenian drama, and uh, Roman women. I got two months into the semester and then I got a concussion and had to drop the whole year. And then the year after that, I couldn't get back to school at all. And then I finally got back slowly to part-time. I'm not ever gonna disqualify myself from completing a minor because I think that's definitely still doable. Um, it just unfortunately wasn't in the cards for me at that time, but fell in love. I really, really appreciated the classical studies. I was obsessed. So interesting. Classical studies wins the award for having, I think, maybe the funniest professors, some of the kindest professors. English and classical studies are tied for the nicest, best professors um, in the world, like seriously so 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 kind yeah especially when i was going through the concussion they really just treated me with so much kindness and they were just like really there for me in ways that i did not expect them to be classical studies really worked for me because it combines what english does really well and what english teaches you to do really well looking critically at things um, interpreting things analyzing things and it applied those same skills to history instead of like a novel which was something i hadn't ever considered but when you're looking at like for example an artifact or an urn or the art on an urn from you know ancient greece or mycenae for example like you are doing so much interpretive work because like that's all you have, that's all you have of it. I don't necessarily mean interpretive and like, okay, what what date or year or who, who is this made by, even though that does play a small part, but really like how does this contribute culturally? What does it mean? What does it signify? Like go beyond the object and into the art and the cultural significance. Again, another, another favorite. What I would consider like the 10th subject that I'm not really gonna put on here because it does still fall under like classical studies slash languages. I did take a couple months of Latin and ancient Greek. Um, those were the those were the months before my injury, so uh, love those as well. Absolutely love those. Loved ancient Greek the most. Um, I still have my textbook and um, that was really an exercise where I could really feel my brain like, you know, mushing around in its little gushy thing, like really working really, really hard because ancient Greek was hard, but so reward and so beautiful so beautiful. Subject number five that I studied was philosophy. 
in my first year I took a philosophy of ethics course I think it was called right and wrong the for my note on this one I just wrote okay I mean this philosophy course was kind of like okay now what the textbook for this course was the dimensions of ethics uh, an introduction to ethical theory. So ethics in this course is the attempt to understand morality. Most of us are usually able to detect moral judgments when we see them. When Ted says, driving with a blood alcohol level of 0 0.09 is wrong because it violates the traffic code of Saskatchewan, he does not make a moral judgment, he makes a legal one. When, on the other hand, Stella asks, yes, but do we always have an obligation to obey this law? After all, most people are still perfectly sober when they register 0 0.09, so what's the harm? She is making a moral judgment. She is questioning whether we have a moral obligation to obey the laws of Saskatchewan on each and every occasion. I think the biggest takeaway for me from philosophy was Broadly speaking, I don't care and I mean that in a very respectful way in like an, an ethics course Where you go over so many different ethical theories moral relativism, which is like there is no one unifying um, Ethical theory that everyone is ever going to agree to uh, we have utili uh, Utilitarianism social contract theory of morality, What else religion mostly like the divine command theory, which is that everything that God says has to be moral. It wasn't a hard course to like I think understand and get behind but for me like engaging in these conversations which is all just speculation about made up stuff what like everything is speculation about made up stuff but I think when I talk about philosophy you know what I mean because for my own sanity engaging in conversations and debates where no one is ever going to agree on the same thing ever uh, I just I'm just like why why would I why would I enter into these conversations, why would I enter into these constructed dilemmas that we've created for ourselves? I don't think I could ever study philosophy in, at an academic level. I'm very interested in reading philosophical texts in an isolated situation by myself at home. These issues, especially of ethics, are super important for day-to-day -day life, but in terms of arguing about them on a philosophical, very like deep intellectual level where like okay if god says this but like we have to interpret it this way how do you know that everything god says is moral like is it right to to maximize goodness what does goodness mean i'm like what's the point it was also a very shockingly boring course i'm not gonna lie we read stuff aside from the textbook like plato's republic we read a lot of aristotle um but we never had like scintillating conversations and like it did fall into the stereotypical philosophy class where like there's two philosophy do bros who are trying to be best friends with the professor and make every class into a debate to the point where the professor can't lecture i can confirm that did happen it was interesting but it's not a subject or topic that i ever really want to engage with on that level because simply i just don't care i'm not saying i don't care about ethics i'm not saying i don't care about philosophy i recognize its importance but on this level I don't care. The next subject that I took was earth sciences um, and the course that I took in this field was astronomy or specifically it was geared towards our solar system I think it was called like origin and geology of our solar system and specifically earth as well this was just okay um, how would I really boil down this course um, memorization it was pretty purely just memorization which um, used to do it for me in elementary school but there wasn't really a chance to engage in that creative side in that interpretive analytical side it was really just like okay how long is a day on venus what are the moons of this what is the distance from this to this um and it was just like again what am i going to do with this information all of the information that i learned in that course gone absolutely gone i can't tell you the length of a day on Uranus. I, I can't. I can't tell you how far Pluto is from the sun because once again that is kind of meaningless to me in the sense that like what the hell am I going to do with that unless I'm going to go to NASA. Definitely very interesting if you have like an itch to discover more about um, our solar system. I appreciated most like the origins and like the evolutionary part. The final essay because this was an essay course was to write about Mars just write a research paper about Mars. Then we have, I think the only arts and humanities faculty course that I thought was a little bit of a joke. Uh, least favorite like arts course that I took. I took a course in film, film studies. And the course that I took was film production. 
that sounds cool. Doesn't that sound cool? It could have been so cool and I think again, honestly, I think again the professor was the issue because speaking to everyone from this course because it was again a very like, okay, you have to work together to do these things kind of course. Everyone did have the same opinion of this professor, unfortunately. Um, I think he used to be like a principal at an elementary school and he never stopped talking to us like we were children, like we were five years old. Um, so film production. So basically this course is supposed to teach you kind of just background fundamental like video editing, filming, being very hands-on with the camera and different equipment. Um, at this point I had kind of just started making videos public on YouTube and doing vlogs and stuff like this. The biggest thing I can say about this course is that running a YouTube channel was much more beneficial and taught me so much more than this film production course did. The editing software that we used was DaVinci, but literally quizzes in this course were keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci, which is an editing software. So that was kind of the level, and this was a third year course. This was a third year course, and this guy was giving us, okay, what is the keyboard shortcut to cut the film? What is the keyboard shortcut to save your project? Please, please. The projects in this course were like, okay, you're gonna make a video every week with a different theme. So the first project was, um, was it about lighting? No, no, no. Oh god, what is it called? Rule of thirds. So you had to make your video all about the rule of thirds, like showing something. Like you had complete freedom over what you filmed. I think with my rule of thirds, I did a video about my plants. There was another one about color grading. One of the final ones was like, okay, you need to make a video with multiple cameras. And then what is the last thing I wrote down? Okay, this was something I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it in the philosophy class, but not in the film class. There were film snobs. I was so surprised. I was like, what is this? They were very much like the drama snobs in my high school class, but they were like, oh, we're senior film students. Like we're gonna do advanced projects and you guys wouldn't understand because we can do special effects and you can. It was just something very weird that I was not expecting. Coming down to the last two, the eighth subject that I took at university was psychology. Psychology. Um, the course that I took specifically was human sexuality. I thought this was gonna be really interesting, juicy, cool, um, and it ended up really being like, I could have Google searched this. Like this class could have been a Google search. Say about my psychology experience. Um, psychology wins the award for having the hardest multiple choice tests ever, ever. I don't know how you psychology kids are doing because like the multiple choice, what is that? Why is it like that? I also didn't appreciate that every single evaluation was a multiple choice test. The answers are like literally trying so hard, like the hardest to trip you up. Like a lot of these other classes had multiple choice tests, but nothing on the level that the psych profs did. Like they were literally trying to psych you out. Anyone want to tell me what that's about? I don't know. Other than that, the course was extremely cut and dry. Let me just read you the description of this course. Provides a survey of the psychological study of human sexual behavior. Topics include the history, theory, ethics, and methodology of the psychological study of human sexuality, the anatomy and physiology, uh, and a review of the varieties of sexual behavior, dysfunction, sexual orientation, contraception, abortion, conception, pregnancy, childbirth, sexual and reproductive health, sexually transmitted infections, sexual coercion, sexual coercion, 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 thank you, and assault, pornography, interpersonal attention, close relationships, and love. What that really translated into was like, why can't you get it up? Four signs you have gonorrhea, not information or topics of learning that I couldn't do by myself with a simple Google search. And finally, the last subject that I took in university is obviously the one I'm getting my degree in, and that is language and literature. English, language and literature. It really did combine something from all other areas, all other subjects that I've just mentioned in some way, shape or form. Very varied approach, really great experience. Um, I will be doing like a whole video just on English, so I'm not gonna harp on it for too long here. But the courses that I took in case you were interested, we have Enriched Introduction to English Literature, that was obviously my first year. Um, and then we have Theory and Criticism, Science Fiction, Space Time and Physics and Literature, The History of the English Language, that was awful. <laughs> if you've taken that, you know that's a bad time. British and Irish literature, American literature, Renaissance literature, and women in literature. And I'm not gonna say that that is the finished amount of courses that I've taken because 
let's put a pin in it. But yes, those are all the subjects that I took at university. I don't really have any regrets, except for the part where I lost two years of my academic life, but that's, uh, it is what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you found this useful, like I said, in some way, shape, or form, or just entertaining. Um, but that was my that was my undergraduate experience. I would love, 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 love to know what you are studying or what's like the coolest course you've ever taken. I'm obsessed with like hearing what people are studying, what they're doing. I think it's so fun, so fascinating. So please leave your, you know, degree or just whatever you're studying on your own, whatever you're doing, I'd love to hear about it. So um, until my next video, I'll see you then. Hope you have a great day. Ciao.